What is popping, people? And welcome back to another Tattoo Tips video. Today's video is going to be on bloodlining. What is it? Where to use it? Some negatives and some positives. So let's go. <laughs> Before we start this video, if you are new around here, please consider subscribing to the channel. Also, do not forget to turn on bell notifications to get notified every time I upload a new video. If you want to support the channel, you can support through a channel membership. That is just general support. Everything through a membership gives you no extra benefits. You are just supporting the YouTube channel. However, if you want some extra benefits, you can subscribe to my Patreon. Link is in the description. Bloodlining, what is it? Well, there are two types of bloodline. Well, technically there's one type of bloodline and then there's a gray line, but we'll, we'll call it two types. So a bloodline, what is a bloodline? A bloodline is when you just take distilled water and you run it across your stencil, marking everything in place, but Obviously there's no pigment, so you know once that has healed, there is gonna be absolutely no repercussions from that. It is literally there just to preserve your stencil for that specific session. Gray lines, what is a gray line? Well, a gray line is when you want to preserve your stencil for future session. If I know that I'm not gonna get that tattoo done on that specific day, then more than likely I will gray line. I gray line all the time. It just takes the hassle out of having to re-stencil, resize everything. It's gray lining is awesome. So when would you use a bloodline? Now, I personally would use bloodlines in every single color piece that I am going to do. And also, like I said, in every single piece that can be completed on that day, if I am scared of losing my stencil. Generally with color, you are wiping a lot more. Color stains the skin a lot more than wash will ever do. So you are, you know, it's just, it's just messy. So a bloodline helps with that situation. And gray lines, like I said, the only real benefit for a gray line is to preserve your stencil for a future session. That is it. I don't use a gray line for anything else other than just preserving a stencil. Now, both do actually come with negatives. Now, the bloodline negative is once you bloodline, what can happen is the skin, depending on the client and depending on where you are tattooing, can become puffy. It's hard to explain, but it, it becomes irritated you see the irritation and it becomes puffy at first it, it's fine it becomes puffy after a few hours so if you are doing a a long session and you've stenciled some details at the top and you know you're not going to get there for a few hours just be careful because yes it, it can become puffy it can become irritated also if you are doing bloodlines in detailed areas especially that's that's close together that puffiness can ruin that for you and it's a lot harder to read, especially if your stencil's not there. For these areas, you might want to sub it with a gray line, but also be careful with that because you don't want your gray lines to be interfering with the integrity of your piece. If you put a gray line, for example, over a area, say you're doing a face and you gray line straight through the middle of that face because it's got some shading across the cheek, you're thinking that you can shade over that and you're not gonna see that gray line, you will be sadly mistaken and you will see it. So just be careful. Which takes me on to the negative of a gray line. You could do your gray line too dark, but you could also do your gray line too light. You may gray line and think that it's there for the next session, but as soon as it's healed, it's way too light. You can't see it and you, you have to re-stencil anyway. So finding that balance is key to gray lining. 
Obviously, you can go darker or lighter depending on where you're grey lining and the values in your piece. But generally, I keep a grey line to one tone, which is always my lightest tone. So let's go on to some don'ts. Now, as I've just been saying with grey lines and putting it through a face and it's still been visible, you also wouldn't do that with blood lines. Yes, although that line is not going to be there on the heel and you're going to see absolutely nothing, it will be there on the picture and it will make your tattoo look like shit. Check out this Superman that I did. As you can see on the top of the forehead, I either bloodlined this or grey lined it. I cannot remember. But as you can see, I took the picture. You can see it. It's very, very visible. It just ruins it for you. Do not do bloodlines for any open areas. Just try to preserve the integrity of your stencil for those areas and bloodline the outlines, the shapes and stuff. Do not do what I did. But guys, that is all for today. Again, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you are new around here, we do have a tattoo tips playlist with a shit ton of videos in there for you to peruse. And I shall see you all in the next video, which will be on Sunday at 6 p.m. Ta-ta. Mm -hmm.